Hello, UNLV yogis. Uh, welcome to uh, your on-demand yoga class. I'm Kathy. Um, today we're going to be doing a class called Vin Yin. It's a combination of vinyasa yoga, which is moving with the breath, a more active uh, series of poses, um, and then the yin, which is a quiet, um, more long hold stretching uh, series of poses. So it's a nice combination of yin and yang. We get some energy, we get our heart rates up a little bit, and then we quiet down um, and are able to uh, relax a little. So um, let's start in our child's pose. Um, it is helpful to have blocks, but you don't need them. If you don't have blocks, um, a rolled up towel or even a pillow from your couch can work. Um, yoga can be done anywhere, it's one of the great things about it. So coming into child's pose, knees as wide as your mat, booty is on your heels. Your hands are in between your knees, and you're just gonna walk your hands out nice and gentle. Noticing when, if ever, the booty leaves the heels, and you're pulling the tailbone up as if somebody has you by the back of the pants, and is pulling your rear end up toward the ceiling. Coming into resting your forehead on the mat, you want your elbows up off the mat in this early child's pose because we're getting ready for our vinyasa. So we wanna be active in this child's pose. So you can rock side to side. You can push into one hand or the other. That rocking will massage your forehead, which is really nice. And just as you rock, if the booty did leave the heels, maybe just trying to see if you can get it to touch just for a second there. And when you're done rocking, take two breaths. Inhale, hold the breath. And exhale through the mouth, belly comes to spine. Big inhale, hold. Push into the hands, curl the toes under, coming into your downward facing dog. Maybe this is your first down dog of the day, so you might want to pedal it out. Coming high on your right toes, pushing the left heel down, then reversing it high on the left toes, pushing the right heel down. Trying to get a nice deep stretch in the back of the legs, trying to push the weight back. So you're not so weighty on your hands. It's a lot in your legs, which are obviously much stronger than your arms. And starting for our static downward dog, just holding the down dog, heels push toward the mat, legs can be a little bit bent, tailbone up to the ceiling, chest toward the thighs, gaze through the knees, Shoulder blades wrapping around the spine, strong arms. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, come high on your toes. Exhale, tiptoe your toes to be behind your hands, noticing when, if ever, your hands come up off the mat. Grabbing opposite elbows for ragdoll. You can sway side to side, you can bend your knees as much as you need to. Just trying to imagine, trying to touch the mat with those forearms. Probably not going to reach unless you're super flexible, but that's the feeling you want. You want to try to get deep into the back of the legs if you can. Needs a little bit straighter leg. And maybe moving those forearms just a little bit closer. Nod your head yes. Shake your head no. Let go of that neck. And then release your hands, bending your knees as much as you need to to at least get your tippy fingers on the mat and toe heeling your feet together. 
preparing for our first sun salutation A. Halfway lift, hands to shins, flat back, crown of the head forward, tailbone back. Inhale, exhale, hold. Inhale, soft knees go all the way up. Reach for the ceiling, tailbone pushing forward a little bit. Maybe hands come together, maybe they don't, but just mostly reaching and getting tall. Inhale, exhale, hands to come center, beautiful. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hold. All the way up, Coming back to downward dog. Modified. You're welcome to do a vinyasa in between, but for the sake of time, we're going to come right back to your downward dog. So now moving into our Sun B, our warrior series. Right foot steps forward, directly behind the right hand. Left foot comes at an angle, fully on the ground, ball of the toe and the heel on the ground. Right knee has a nice bend in it. You may have to adjust your stance. Maybe you need a wider stance. I prefer a wider stance in Warrior One. But the most important thing in Warrior One is that your hips are facing straight ahead. This is a closed hip posture, not open. So, um, even bring your hands to your hips and kind of move them so that they're straight ahead, your chest is straight ahead, your gaze is straight ahead. You're pushing into the blade edge of that back foot. That's gonna give you a little pull in that calf, especially if your legs are tight, but that's the idea here. And then finally, hands come to the ceiling. If you would like a modification in this pose, you bring your left knee to the mat, and you bring your toenails to the ground, and your hands go to the ceiling. Same thing, though, your hips should be square. So I'm gonna do the warrior series on my knee on this side, and then on the other side, I'm gonna do the full um, warrior with my knee off the ground. So if you are somebody who would like um, a little bit more power, then you just come back up on that left foot, hands to the ceiling and we go from there. So here we are in our modified warrior one, hands are reaching for the ceiling, inhale, exhale, cactus the arms and bring them down like you're doing a lat pull down, inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, exhale, hands come to heart center and we're going to move into warrior two. On the knee, you may want to move that foot to that left foot to the right side of the mat because Warrior Two is an open hip posture. Unlike Warrior One, where your hips are straight ahead, Warrior Two, your hips are kind of at the side of your mat. You want to make sure though that that right leg doesn't fall in. So even just take your right hand and make sure that knee, that right knee is directly above your ankle, and then right hand comes out to the tee left hand goes back. So nice strong arms, nice nice bend in that front knee, and then flip the front palm, reach forward, and then reach up and back for peaceful warrior. Exhale, coming back to warrior two, hands coming behind your back, clasped like you're praying, will come into humble warrior. So bending from the waist, crown of the head goes to the ground. Maybe that right shoulder comes inside the right knee, knuckles pulling toward the ceiling, extra bonus shoulder stretch. Humble warrior, inhale, exhale. Inhale, coming back up. Reassert your warrior one by moving that left knee or foot however you need to. Hip bones to the front, hands to the ceiling, and then hands come to heart center on the exhale. Plant the hands, right leg goes back, 
coming back to your downward dog. If you're modifying, feel free to come into your tabletop position instead of downward dog. That is fine. If you're in your down dog, feel free to pedal it out a little. We're not going to be here very long. And bring your left foot forward outside your left hand. This time, remember, I'm going to be doing the traditional pose as opposed to the modified version. Right foot comes to the ground, giving yourself as much space as you need on that right side. Right knee is straight, left knee is bent. You want to try to get nice and low in that front left knee. Hands to hips, moving those hips to the front of the room, pushing into the blade edge of that right foot. And finally, inhale, hands this way. Inhale, reach up, exhale, cactus those arms, little pull down. Inhale, reach up, exhale. Inhale, reach up. Hands come to heart center. Bringing that right foot so that it's parallel to the back of the mat and coming into warrior two. Open hip posture, watching that knee right over the ankle. Open up the arms. Arms are strong. Pelvis is pushing to the side of the mat. Flip your front palm, big inhale, and go back. Peaceful warrior. Don't lose that bend in the front left knee. You should be feeling a side body stretch here in this warrior. And back to warrior two. And then hands clasp behind your back for humble warrior. Inhale, pull those shoulder blades together. Exhale, crown of the head comes to the floor. Maybe that Left shoulder comes inside the left knee. Looking through your legs, knuckles going up to the ceiling. Shoulder stretch. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, come up. Exhale, hands to the mat. Optional vinyasa, or you come back to your down dog. Inhale, exhale. One more pose in our VIN part of the class. Right foot steps forward, and then left knee comes down, and we'll come into our side stretch. Left hand stays down, right arm goes up, twist right arm comes under the left armpit and then back to your twist and just do that a couple of times nice nice twisting posture but it's moving it's dynamic and then the right hand comes to the mat right knee comes to the mat left foot steps forward Left arm goes up and then threads underneath the right armpit and back up and threads underneath the right armpit and do that a couple times. Your gaze is following that hand. Alrighty. And coming back, we're entering now the yin portion of the class. So coming into uh, our tabletop position, maybe do a cat and cow interval. So cow, belly falls, chest forward, elbow up, inhale. And cat around back like an angry cat. Let's do a couple of those. And here we are in our uh, yin portion of the class. So 
So for each yin pose, we are gonna hold for 10 full breaths on my count. So that's pretty long, um, it's, it's well over a minute. Um, so you want to be somewhat comfortable in your yin pose, like you shouldn't be sort of in screaming pain, obviously, I hope. Um, but you know, you sort of have to figure out the level of discomfort that you are willing to sort of be patient with as we hold the pose. So first pose will be lizard pose. Bringing that right foot forward outside the right hand. Right heel is on the mat, right toes are off the mat, so it's at kind of an angle. And you're scooching that left foot back until you feel a little bit of a pull in the quad. Now, push your chest forward. Maybe you have to come up on the tips of your fingers. You can also bring a block and get yourself some height that way. The idea here is to be heavy in your pelvis and your chest is forward. So you're getting the pull in the groin and a little bit in the left quad. You can stay here. If you would like a little bit more in lizard, you can come down to your forearms. And the more you walk your hands or your forearms away from your body, the more intense the stretch gets. So come to wherever you feel like you can hold it for the full 10 breaths. We are going to take a small modification um, at the sort of, sort of the last few breaths of this lizard pose, but get where you're going and we'll start the breathing now. Inhale, exhale. When you feel this comfort, just breathe into that space. Always in yin, we are wondering where we're clenching or holding on. Try to surrender to the pose. Open your mouth, let go of your jaw. Try not to scrunch your eyebrows or your face. Two more breaths, inhale, exhale. And on your inhale, very gently coming back to your hands if you were on your elbows or if you were on a block and twisting to the right, coming to the blade edge of that right foot, and using your right hand on the inside of your right thigh to give yourself a little assist, opening up the right hip a little bit, getting an IT band stretch on the outside of the right thigh. We'll hold here for four breaths, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, Two more. One more. And on the exhale, bring that foot back to the mat. Bring the hand back to the mat. Right knee goes back. Left knee comes forward. Tabletop position. Taking some cats and cows. You can shake your tail or take some rotations, whatever feels good to you to sort of release that lower back. And when you're ready, bringing that right foot forward, but this time toe heeling the right foot across the mat, coming into half pigeon, coming to the blade edge of that right foot and then the top of the foot comes to the mat and then the shin and the knee come to the mat. And then your left leg scooches back, toenails to the ground. Don't get all tense in pigeon with your toes curled. You really want to relax in pigeon. So your right toes are toenails down on the left side of your mat. Your right knee is on the right side of your mat. Some people can be, have their shin parallel to the front of the mat. 
many people can. So if it's at a little bit of an angle, that's fine. So starting up, here's our upright pigeon, chest forward, gaze forward, just like we did in that lizard pose. And then coming down first to our forearms, and then maybe you stay here. That's enough for you. You're gonna feel this in the right glute and butt cheek. If you wanna to go to full pigeon, arms come out in front of you, reaching out like Superman arms and forehead to the mat. Many, many options for modifications here. One is if your right glute is way up off the mat, you can put a block in the lowest orientation right under your butt cheek and that will give you some support there. If you would like, I like to have a block kind of in between my chest, right at my sternum sometimes, and this will give me a little height and I'm not sort of dying in pigeon. I can still get my head and my, and my arms out, but it's a little bit more doable. Yet wherever you're going, we're going to take eight breaths here because I think maybe many of you are already in pigeon. So pigeon is one of those poses that gets harder the more you stay in it. So inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, those left toes under and come back to downward dog or your tabletop. Pigeon can be very compressive on the leg that is underneath so you want to do whatever you can to get some movement, some blood flow back into that leg. So that's why I like downward dog after pigeon. You can walk it out, take the movement that you need to make it work for you. And when you're ready back to your tabletop, Left leg comes forward outside the left hand and toe heels across the mat, coming to the blade edge of the left foot and then the top of the left foot. Left toes are toenails down on the right side of the mat. Right leg scooches back, won't be bone straight or stick straight, but it'll be pretty straight back behind you. Left knee is on the left side of the mat. Maybe your shin is parallel, maybe it isn't, that's okay. So, straight arms to start, chest forward, gaze forward, pigeon. And then noticing if you're a little less flexible on one side or the other, maybe you're more flexible on this side. But if you, for example, have great, even in this upright pigeon, great, um, pull or discomfort in that left glute, then you can just stick a block under there. That will give you some nice support. Or you can come down to your forearms on or off a block. Or you can do that thing that I did the last time, which was have a block sort of right in between your nipples and go in the kitchen that way. Get where you're going. We'll take those eight breaths. Make those breaths big and juicy. Notice if you are clenching. Are you clenching your hands? Are you scrunching your face? Is your jaw tight? Yin is about surrender. And it is about acknowledging and being patient with discomfort. 
teaches us so much about how to get through those times in our lives that are uncomfortable without immediately trying to get out of it. Three more breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Last one, make it count. Exhale. Inhale, walk gently out of it. And then flop down onto that left glute. Bring the right leg in front of you and the left leg in front of you. Resting on those glutes, knees are bent, hands are behind you, and just windshield wiper. It's a little different from your down dog interval on the other side, but this is a nice little glute massage that you can do if you're ever tight there, but it will do the thing we need it to do, which is get some blood flow back into those glutes. Come to lying on your back, knees to chest, and take a happy baby, grabbing blade edges of the feet, rocking if you wish. You can also take an ecstatic baby here, peace sign fingers around the big toes, and straightening and coming into an open straddle. A little bit more of an intense pose, restorative would be your happy baby. Either one or your combo. What the heck, try it all. And then knees to chest for a moment and then bringing feet back onto the ground and windshield wiper those knees side to side. And finally, bringing the knees to the left side first, left hand on the top of the right thigh, coming into spinal twist. Right arm will go out, I can't because the couch is here, but straight out to a T, palm down, just stick it under the couch. And so as your right arm reaches out, you're gonna pull your legs to the left. So you're twisting from the lower part of your back, your waist. So you're gonna feel a little pull in the right glute, but this is really about the spine. If you would like a little bit more, you can straighten out that top leg. That'll give you a little bit more pull in the glute you can turn your gaze to your right hand if you like, or you can just keep it straight ahead. So the idea of this pose is, if I were there with you in the room, I would come and I would pull on your right hand, like as if you're trying to save somebody who's like, I don't know, falling, and you're gonna grab their hand and they're pulling on you. That's the feeling you want in that right hand going out to the right, as the lower half of your body goes out to the left. So pulling in oppositional directions. And let's start our breathing. Get where you're going to go. You've been here a while, so we'll just take five breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Let go, release. Make those breaths big and juicy. Try to count at least to five on the inhale and then five on the exhale. One more breath. And exhale. And on the next inhale, bringing knees back to chest, taking whatever movement you need. You can rock side to side. You can make circles with your knees. You can bring your hands to your hamstrings and rock up and back. Whatever feels good, you do it. And then bring your feet back to the mat. Knees are bent. And we'll take those windshield wipers again, preparation for spinal twist on the other side. And when you're 
you're done with your dynamic prep, bring those knees to the right side, left arm goes out to a T, pulling with your right hand on the outside of your left thigh as you reach out to the left of that left hand. You can always straighten that top leg. You need a little bit more. And you can turn to look at that left hand. Beginning on 10 breaths. good to you. And then feet come to the ground, knees are bent, and then opening up into Supta Baddha Konasana, Supta and Cobbler's Pose. So soles of the feet are together, knees are opening up to the side. The more you draw your heels towards your pelvis, the more intense the pose is. If you want to make it less intense, you bring those heels away and you're making more of a diamond shape with your legs. You can also, if you have blocks, bring blocks to the outside of your thighs or your knees just to give yourself a little bit of support in this pose. Totally up to you. I'm going to do gravity today because I would like to open up my hips. If you want a little extra, you can even give yourself a little assist. Pushing gently on the inside of the thighs. And then traditionally in this pose, one hand on the heart, one on the belly. But you could bring hands overhead and grab opposite elbows or you can bring your hands to goalpost arms, so sort of make robot arms, wrists up, elbows are bent at a 90 degree angle, then palms up and just bring them down, little bonus shoulder stretch, and see the body can also if you like. We will start our breaths, inhale for five, exhale for five. Inhale for five. Exhale for five. Inhale for five. Exhale for five. And keep going. Take whatever you need, and then bring your feet 
to the ground. Open oh, up. Open up so that your feet are flopped open. Your hands can be anywhere. They can be overhead. They can be grabbing opposite elbows above the head. You can be one hand on your heart, one on your belly, by your side, palms up, palms down. Big inhale. Let your belly pooch out and then blow it all out. One more like that. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Relax in your Shavasana. Maybe focusing on that place in between your eyebrows, your third eye. Opening up your mouth wide. And then relaxing your jaw and your tongue. Take as long in Shavasana as you like. Being gentle with yourself. Thinking about why you did yoga today. Maybe what you learned from doing our moving vinyasa and then our restorative doing. As always, the light in me acknowledges and honors the light in each and every one of you. It is always my joy to lead you in this practice. Namaste. When you do come out of Shavasana, come out nice and gentle, moving fingers and toes, just being kind and gentle to your body, not jerking out of it or jumping out of it. Let yourself rest. 